In this video we're going to take a look at how we can use Cisco's Embedded Event Manager or EEM scripts to automatically run a script when connections to the radius server are down and you have pre off ACLs configured on the endpoint or user interfaces and you, in, you need to allow connectivity out so that users can continue to work before we do this we will take a look at the current configurations on this demo switch so currently we can see that gigabit ethernet 101 is authenticated with an IP address and authorized it's in multi off mode and it's in the data, data domain. We can see that a DACL has been pushed from Cisco ICE and we are authenticated using dot one X and we can see authentication is successful. So in an event that we cannot reach the ICE server to authenticate users, we need a way when running low impact mode to enable users to continue to work. With pre off ACLs um, there will be manual intervention needed if you do not have a way in which you can automatically connect to the switches and have the switches implement a rule that permits access to resources so that users can continue to work. So if we just do a show run on that gigabit interface we can see that we have an access VLAN configured we have a um, voice VLAN configured and we also have low impact mode running with a pre off ACL in place we can see that we have a critical VLAN assigned of 100 in case the server fails so what we need to do is if we take a look at the show run take a look at the access list So the pre off EEM, which is configured currently on Gigabit 101, is only permitting DNS, DHCP, and it's going to deny everything else. So what we need to do is we need a way in which where by when the connection to the radio server fails or the ice server fails, we need a way in which we can automatically implement a rule into this access list to permit um, access to resources that are required by your business or just to permit access to everything so that users can continue to work so this is a fail open approach so what we need to do to actually simulate this is we'll first change the key to the radius server so now the key is incorrect and we will not be able to reach and authenticate to the radius server so just to force an authentication I will do a test And we should see the change occur. We should see syslog messages that tell us that the radio servers or server is dead. So you can see there radius four radius dead, the server is dead and not responding.
we should receive another message in a minute telling us that all radio servers are dead this occurs when you have multiple radio servers we can see as well that the user has been rejected so if we just have a look at the authentication now on gigabit 101 you can see that it's still the same but if we do now clear the sessions we can see that authentication has failed and we have the critical VLAN which has now been put in place as a result of this syslog message dot one x five result override so if we do the same command again we can see that dot one x authentication has now failed we can see that all radio servers are dead we can see that the service template running is a critical off vlan and we can see that it's authorized but the domain is unknown the IP address should also change, which it just has. So it was it, it is now 172.16.5.100 and it was 10.100. So this is now in the critical R VLAN, but this user does not have any access out to the internet or resources that it really does need. So what we'll do is we'll just change everything back to how it was and then we'll input the EM script and then we'll run it again to see what happens when the connection to the radius server fails So now we can see that that port has returned back to, it's reinitialized and it's returned back to authentication successful for dot one X. We can see it's back in the data domain and we can see that the IP address has now changed back to what it should be. And a bit of DACL has been pushed down from ICE. So what we'll do now is we'll input the EEM script, which has already been pre-created and will be available on my website www.networkwizkid.co.uk and we will run the test again and hopefully we should still have connectivity from our endpoint so what we'll do is we'll just verify our current access list because this name will need to be input into our EM script. So I will now, with my script, I will paste it in configurations which basically tell us if we see a syslog message on this switch that's radius 4 radius dead then we're going to enter the pre off EM access list and on line 1 of that access list we're going to permit IP any any depending on your company's policies and what security you have in place these access lists may be different So this is an action of what to do if the radio servers are dead. Now I will get my other script which will enable us or enable the switch to remove that fallback script when a 
radius server is reachable again. Yeah. So now I will paste that one in. And this tells us when we receive a radius for radius alive, then we're going to enter the pre off ACL, ACL, which is a pre off EEM ACL, and then we're going to remove the permit IP any with the no one permit IP any any and end. So we'll now test this to see if it works by itself. So I will change the radius server password I will now test just to force authentication And we should still see the same result in that authentication fails and the servers are marked as dead. So we can see that we've received the message there, radius 4, radius dead. So we would take a look at the access list. And as you can see now, the access list as a permit IP any any at the top of the command. So if we check the authentication status of our client. We can see that it's still authorized. So what we'll do is we'll force a clear session. see that authentications failed and now the critical off VLAN has been applied. You can see that authentication has failed. The IP address is still the same for now, however this should change. Just give it a few moments. Now we can see that the IP address has changed and we'll just verify that that access list is still the same. And you can see that that's still in there. We can also show EE Show event manager. Statistics. Policy. So we can see that it's been triggered once. And that's a fallback. We've not recovered yet because our server is still down. So we can see it's not been triggered at all yet. So what we'll do is we'll change all the settings back to normal and we'll see again what happens.
can see that the servers have just been marked as alive again. There we go, radius 4, radius alive is what we look for in order to recover. So if we just check the part. You can see that dot one x is now successful again and everything is back to normal. So if we check the trigger, we can see that the recovery script has also been triggered once now. So that is how you can use EEM scripts on switches to fail open when using low impact mode for authentication with ICE or ACS. Thanks for watching.